Hello, it's Yovazal, and I'm here to tell you my story and how I got into doing analog video visuals and effects and other related things. The reason why I'm making a video like this is because I feel like it will help people who are looking for answers and guidance when it comes to analog video visuals and hardware. Especially if you're just lost and confused, uh, you're probably like me a few years ago. This video isn't a buying guide of stuff you should get, rather it's more a walkthrough of my thought process as I was getting into this stuff. I'm not gonna tell you you need to buy this certain thing because everybody's doing this for different reasons and want to wants to accomplish different things with this art. My point is it's not really about the specific models, it's more about the general concepts that I'll be talking about. So now it's story time. Grab a snack and let's get right to it. My dad was just like many dads at the turn of the century. He had a camcorder. And on family vacations, he used it a lot. This camcorder is a Sony Handycam, and it was a very common consumer ham, <laughs> hamcorder, camcorder. It used Hi8 magnetic tape, which comes in cassettes that look like this. And that was a pretty common format for cameras made around the year 2000 when I was born. Inevitably, my dad's hobby of filming a lot with this resulted in a large quantity of these tape cassettes sitting in our closet. And in order to view these tapes on something other than the camera's LCD screen, you would need to take a composite RCA cable and plug it into the camera's composite video out and plug the other end into an old TV or any other kind of screen that accepts composite video signals. In my case, my dad, when he was digitizing the tapes, he would plug the camera's output into this, put the camera in playback mode, press play, and record on the computer with this uh, capture dongle, which I've talked about before. So fast forward to 2018 and I picked up this camera and pressed record because I was bored. I looked at the footage and was like, wow, that's some lo-fi footage right there. How do I get this onto my laptop? So I asked my dad and he said, use this and I did. And I noticed that when I was in playback mode and I would press like rewind or play or fast forward or pause really fast, the tape would glitch and produce signal distortions. And I would keep doing that because I thought the glitches looked pretty cool. I'm sure that's not healthy for the, the playheads inside this camera, but I did it anyways. And so basically I would just film stuff with this camera and uh, I would just go in Adobe Premiere Pro after digitizing the tapes and make lo-fi edits out of it. Around the same time I was doing this, my friend told me to try a thing called camera feedback, which is when you take a camera and plug it into a TV, but you point the camera at the same TV to produce a feedback loop where the image repeats itself. I didn't have a TV or any TV that accepted composite video to plug the Handycam into, but fortunately, my dad, who also used to be a videographer, also had a Canon Vixia GH30, which is a typical prosumer, I guess, camcorder from the year 2012. Anyways, I plugged its HDMI output into the flat screen TV in the downstairs living room. And I was blown away because I thought I had discovered something super cool, like camera feedback is amazing. And if you haven't tried it before in your life and you have a camera and a TV, do it right now. Just stop, pause the video, just like go try it. Your life is about to change and it's pretty easy to do. Side note, I mentioned in another video that this camera just so happens to output composite analog video natively in addition to HDMI 1080p signals. All you have to do is just use this three ringed adapter. But before you go rush to buy this exact camera, please know that this is not the only digital camera that does this because this feature exists across many cameras made in the early 2010s, just to maintain compatibility with the different standards as the world was transitioning from analog to digital. 
Also around the time I discovered tape glitches and camera feedback, that same friend who told me about camera feedback was also the drummer in an up-and-coming rock band called Sour Cream. And they were playing a show at a dive bar that weekend. I was already planning on filming some of their shows with this camera, so we thought it'd be a cool idea to use the venue's in-house projector, plug this camera into the projector, turn it on, and do a big wall of video feedback on top of them during their set while I was recording. As dumb luck or fate would have it, a band called Sweet Country Meat Boys was playing later there that night, and this band happened to be the only band in Kentucky that had a dedicated live projectionist. His name is Travis, and he goes by Sensible with a silent P and he performs live visuals with a bunch of MIDI controllers hooked up to his computer running Resolume Avenue 6, a VJ software which allows him to mix and perform visuals live on the spot in real time. I was like, huh, you have a way better live visual setup that I didn't even know was possible. Are you telling me that there's software that you can mix and process effects on videos in real time without rendering? Travis looked at me and thought, did this guy really just walk in here with nothing but a camera and thought he could just plug it into the projector and do a set for 45 minutes? Well, to make a long story short, we both did a set that night, with one being considerably more interesting, but we were friends ever since. And actually, Travis, I gotta shout him out. He has been my mentor for a long time. When it comes to this type of live visual stuff, always giving me advice and how to like set up a projector and stuff like that. Even he invented the mounting system that I use to install projectors at venues uh, the day of a show. But after that night, he encouraged me to keep experimenting and come up with a way to do live visuals. And so I did. At first, I didn't really know what to do for visuals other than camera feedback like I had just done or record stuff on tapes and then glitch them out on the camcorder. But I didn't really want to copy Travis and his whole Resolume setup, so I looked for ways to take what I already had and turn it into a live setup. Little did I know, this would bring me down the analog video rabbit hole. I first asked myself, is there a way to easily switch between camera feedback and these tape glitches in my visuals? I noticed that Travis was cutting between video clips in Resolume using MIDI controllers and push buttons, and I wondered if I could do the same thing, but with hardware. If I was a normal person using up-to-date technology, I would have looked at an HDMI video switcher. Except the Handycam is obviously analog, so I needed an analog video switcher. Once again, my dad coming in clutch just so happened to have a passive analog video switcher, which is pretty common to use in like retro gaming setups so you can switch between consoles. These switchers are really simple. They just have pieces of metal inside, so when you push the button, it physically switches the source by like snapping the metal. Uh, to connect the video signal to the output. It's, it's not very complicated when you open it up and look inside, but it makes it very easy to switch between multiple sources. So the next show I did, I used exactly that switcher. I had a camera, two VCR players loaded with cowboy western tapes I bought from eBay, and the Sony Handycam, which I could also use as a second feedback camera. After that show, I felt I needed something more because this was just clip switching, which is just hard cutting between sources. I could do that to the beat, but there wasn't like much more of a performative aspect to that. What I really needed was to be able to mix between sources. In other words, to fade, wipe, or key between sources. As dumb luck or fate would have it, one of my teachers in high school had an analog video mixer sitting in his garage. It was a SEMA SFX9. This mixer, like many analog video mixers, has multiple inputs, and sometimes the mixer even has multiple outputs. Mixers allow you to fade, wipe, and key between two sources at the same time, 
And yes, some mixers have more than two inputs, but every mixer will have an A bus and a B bus where you get to select the source or the input that you want active on that bus and you will fade or mix in between those two sources. Now, thanks to my mixer, my show had these cool looking shapes due to its selection of wipe patterns. I recommend if you have a video mixer, you try to use wipe patterns on a camera feedback source, it'll stimulate it in an interesting way. Some mixers have onboard effects, like the Roland Ederol V4, V8, or V4EX, which have the most variety of effects and wipe modes. The most common effects are invert, strobe, or pixelation, and sometimes posterizing and colorizing. Now, based on the DMs I get, if you're looking for glitchy effects, these mixers don't do that because they haven't been circuit bent and they don't distort signals by themselves. Unless you know what you're doing, which you probably don't if what I just told you is news to you, I advise that you don't try to circuit bend them. You will probably fry it with a shortened connection because of the high number of sensitive microchips that are inside these things. However, a unique thing that a video mixer allows you to do is to create an internal video feedback loop without a camera, which you can use as a source to mix between. This type of feedback, as well as camera feedback, turned out to be the building blocks for many of my live visuals. But, but wait, Yovazal, what is this dirty video mixer I keep hearing about? What does that do? Well, if you're serious about doing any kind of analog video glitch effects, I highly recommend you build a dirty video mixer, which costs about $5 in parts. Why it's called a dirty video mixer is because it's so dead simple and raw that it lacks any of the complicated circuitry found inside real video mixers. So when you turn the knob, the output is glitchy and distorted because the two video sources are colliding with each other and they're out of sync and they haven't been corrected. So properly built analog video mixers, because they deal with multiple inputs, have built-in time-based correctors and sync generators to put every video source on the same sync signal so there's no distortion when you're mixing between them. That's the difference between a proper manufactured video mixer and a $5 dirty video mixer. If you're confused at this point, stop and take a breather. Come back to YouTube and watch a video or two on the basics of analog video or electronics in general. This knowledge will be extremely useful in understanding what is and what isn't possible with analog video hardware. So with my live show, I used both dirty video mixers and proper video mixers, and I had the bright idea of having a camera be one of the inputs in my dirty video mixer, which makes an extremely cool looking time warp type thing if you point the camera at the monitor. So basically, I had all the elements I needed to do visuals live without a computer. I had camera feedback, internal feedback loops, wipe modes and wipe shapes, keying, and whatever analog sources I wanted to plug into the video mixers, which could be uh, anything from VCRs to analog video cameras that are playing back tapes but I soon realized that a computer would be to my benefit. So in my view, there's no point in mixing VHS tapes or DVD players when you can just pre-edit the footage you want to glitch on your computer and just downscale it to analog in real time while it's playing on your PC. So I eventually did start using Resolume to launch clips in real time, and the first show I did this for was with Sugar Candy Mountain at Expansion Fest in 2019, where I had a different clip playing for every song, and I would mix them each in a different way and do digital effects that were built into Resolume in addition to the analog video effects. So I really got a combination of the best of both worlds. However, if you notice, and especially if you watch this set that I talked about, I had not used a single piece of hardware made by any of the people I talked about in this video. And so my show continued to be running like this for a long time without any circuit bent devices, just mixing between sources, mostly stuff on my laptop 
and the routing possibilities of all this stuff turned out to be just enough for me to keep experimenting for every show. You're probably wondering, why didn't I get into any hardware video synthesizers? Those make visuals too. And the answer is the cost to entry was a little too high for me with the exception of the Chav, which I will cover soon. I found that anytime I wanted to have abstract shapes and patterns in my visuals, I would have an easier time using a software like Cathodomer or Lumen on my laptop and hooking up something like an Akai MIDI mix controller to manipulate the patches there on the laptop in real time and then downscale the output to my analog video setup. If you've seen my rig rundown, which I posted like over a year now, you probably know what analog video mixers I use and what gear I have and enhancers. I got most of my gear one at a time over the course of two years and I haven't really bought anything in the past, like anything major in the past year. With the exception of this, which is from uh, coolpix.biz, I actually had the base unit and I sent it in for them to bend, which is always a possibility with circuit benders if you happen to find the base unit. But even before I got any circuit bend stuff, I started adding enhancers to my setup or color correctors. Most importantly, I did this on my camera feedback signal so I could change the brightness and color of the video feedback to the beat if I wanted to. This is also applicable to internal video feedback loops produced by video mixers. That gives you a whole nother layer of manipulation on the feedback loop. So any setting that you dial in on the enhancer or color corrector will add like a completely different look. And it's just all you need to stimulate the loop to create new different colors and patterns. Eventually though, after a long time, I got my first circuit bent device, the Line Arositor by Coolpix.biz. But even so, I found that I wasn't really using it that much for live performances, mostly because there's so many knobs to play with and dial in that I would just get distracted from the more important elements of live video mixing. As far as routing goes, that's highly subjective based on like how you want to your visuals to look. There's all sorts of ways you can patch your laptop output into the mixer or key in a feedback loop or mix in camera feedback on top of something else. But these are all different ways to generate different looks for live visuals. And if you're watching this and you're like, well, I'm not really here to, to do live visuals or perform visuals on top of bands, well, then all that you really need, if assuming that you're just looking to glitch videos for the aesthetic or whatever, look at this video, specifically the circuit bent stuff, and find something that is available and glitch the footage using a downscaler and an old TV. And of course, I haven't really talked about video synthesizers, and that's just because of my lack of experience in those, and there's already quite a lot of interesting content about video synthesizers. It's just so engineering heavy that uh, I haven't really like dabbled into it too deeply. So as you can see, it doesn't actually take that much to get started doing analog video visuals or visuals of any kind because there's all sorts of software for doing visuals live. Uh, I neglected to mention stuff like Max MSP in my tools for video art video. That's another real-time effects processing thing, although that's a little more sophisticated because it's kind of like a weird modular programming patching kind of thing that I haven't even started to touch. Really, the main stumbling block, according to my DMs, are really small things or just overthinking or misunderstanding the basic concepts of how video signals work. But the biggest obstacle of them all is rarity of equipment. This is why I really hope someday that this niche will get big enough and there'll be somebody out there commercially making analog video hardware geared towards live visual artists and glitch artists in the same way that there is a whole market for guitar pedals and synths. Lastly, if a stumbling block for you is cables and you don't know where to get them, I highly recommend showmecables.com. 
I'm not like sponsored by them or anything. I just think they're one of the best places online that sells newly produced RCA and S video cables. I really like to order these three foot long composite RCA video cables as well as S video cables. And they also have all sorts of adapters and converters that you may want. So I hope this got your brain thinking, gears turning. I know I haven't put many videos of this type where I'm talking to the camera on my channel lately, but that's simply because I'm busy and I am much more than just a tutorial or gear review channel on YouTube. I have a lot of other art projects because I actually use this gear and not to mention I have a whole two semesters of college left as of uploading this video. If you want me to create something for you, you'll find my email on my website, yovazal.com on the about page. Life moves fast. I get overwhelmed, rates change. So just check back in with me if I say I'm too busy for something. But anyways, thanks for watching. Stay creative and peace out.